Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Can y'all hear me? Yay! Babe, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Listen, happy Monday to each of you. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker, and today is Monday, October the 24th. I'm super excited about today because today is my one-year wedding anniversary. Yay! God did it. Listen, listen, listen. Happy anniversary to my amazing, handsome, hubby minister, Ali Tucker. He is in my field of view right now. Uh, we're out of town in uh, San Diego. I have to, I get to attend um, a conference on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so, uh, because it was happening right in the middle of our anniversary, I in, in, in California with his wife. So uh, I give honor to my husband. Um, so super excited about our anniversary. I promise you I'm not going to spend this whole uh, live talking about us, but I am just thankful. So I wanted to start with that. Um, I also give honor to my amazing pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton, and to our church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. I'm super excited that I get this opportunity every Monday morning to, to lead the body of Christ in corporate prayer. So I thank you for jumping on here. It's super early uh, here in San Diego, uh, 530 in the morning. So uh, that may be a little bit of the morning voice that you're hearing. Of course, I got my attendee badge on uh to show that i'm legit but good morning to each of you good morning miss debbie how are you beautiful hey handsome husband i love you thank you miss debbie god bless you hey miss sandra how are you good morning ashley i love you beautiful sis thank you so much good morning miss sandra how are you listen what the lord gave me today um i woke up um, hearing a song uh, or ha having a song in my spirit by Tamala Mann. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and apologize for some of the background noise because we're in the conference hall. That was the quietest place I could find. So just try to stay focused. Um, but I woke up this morning hearing a song in my spirit. Um, Change me, oh God, make me more like you. And so I had to Google the song. Um, I'm not a huge Tamala Mann fan. Forgive me, forgive me. Um, but I realized that she's, she's sung that song so I listened to it this morning as I was getting ready and it just kept rolling around in my spirit and so the Lord said that's what I want you to talk about today change me oh God make me more like you and so um what the Lord began to reveal to me is Hebrews 12 and 6 where the word of God declares whom the Lord loves he chastens um basically he disciplines or corrects those that he loves um God is love so that is the bottom line. But a lot of us don't like correction because we've not been corrected in love. We've been corrected by people who not necessarily um, didn't mean us any, any good. But when you think back over your life, if you had people who corrected in love, um, um, my grandmother and my mother uh, would be uh, not public rebuke, um, but it would be more babe. Here's what we need to do going forward. You did good, but let's work on X, Y, and Z. And so if you have people in your life who, who can correct in love, sometimes it's your spiritual leaders, um, sometimes it's just someone who's like a mom or like a dad who can speak over you um, and, and correct in love. Nobody loves correction. Nobody with good sense. <laughs> <laughs> loves correction because uh, we want to get it right the first time. We want to be caught doing well. We love praise, but not necessarily correction. And so um, when I woke up and I heard that phrase, change me, oh God. And listen, pray right now that your heart be open and that you be receptive to this. Because sometimes once you start talking about correction, people start shutting down on you. So I need you guys to stay with me because I promise you I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. I I'm not about to jump down your back and correct you. I I'm just going to tell you what I had to do. Okay. So, so stay right there. But, um, I'm, I woke up again and I'm hearing the song, change me, oh God, make me more like you. And so I was asking the Lord, I was like, what do you want me to share with your people? And he said, I want you to share that, how 
you came to me and said, change me. So I told you at the beginning of this that today is the one year wedding anniversary for Minister Al and myself. And so before we got married, I said to him, we need to go through counseling. Both of us had been married before, long marriages, uh, 18, 20 plus years, and um, the marriages ended in divorce. And so I said to him, we know what to do wrong, but let's just get some tools so we know how to be right. And so when we went through premarital counseling, I had to constantly say to God, change me, change me, change whatever in me is not like you so that I can love this gift that you've given me. Now, uh, most people, we think we're the bomb. We think we know what a good relationship looks like. We think we know what we need to do. You know, let's get it. But I was like, there's something in me, there's something in my mind, something in my thought process that I need to learn so that I can be a good wife. And as we began to go through counseling, most of the counseling was internal and reflective. It wasn't so much of, if he does this, you do this. It was like, no, no matter what he does, here's what your responsibility is. And so I began to see marriage as a different type of interaction. It wasn't a contract. It wasn't based on, if you do this and do this and do this, then I'll do this and do this and do this. That's a contract. Marriage is a covenant. It is an agreement that I am going to move forward like this, that this is going to be my mantle, that I got you, I got your back. I am going to correct Um, continually point you towards God. I'm I'm going to constantly speak life over you. No matter what you do, I can't control what anyone else does except me. And so um, as I began to to go through the premarital counseling and, and I was like, wow, you know, I've been thinking about this all wrong. It is not contingent upon if he acts right, if he does this, and if it has nothing to do with him. The covenant is not only between uh, Minister Al and myself, It is between me and God. I'm saying to God, I'm going to handle your son well. And so as we begin to move through through marriage and 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 everything god continually brought that thing back to me it has nothing to do now he's an amazing husband i'm not saying anything negative towards him but if you're around anybody 24 7 they get on your nerves right and so uh we would go to god and pray and be like get get your boy get your boy jesus <laughs> and he would say what are you doing what did you say did you respond in love? He would never say, okay, I got him. I got him for you, sis. No, he would say, you continue in love. And and now as ministers and as leaders in the church, um, I, I, I was saying to one of my mentors yesterday, these people know when they're acting crazy. They know when they throw it off. And, 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 and it was like, mm-mm. That's not your role. Your role is to show love. Your role is to nurture and correct and love. You're not to beat people up from the pulpit. You're not to beat people up with this medium that we have. And for every spiritual leader, for every um, pastor that you've set under who has not handled you well, pray for them. Pray for them because that is not God's perfect will for your life. There's a reason why you're not under them now. But you ask God for spiritual leaders, for leaders after God's own heart who correct in love. I, my pastor is younger than me. Um, and I give her permission to speak whatever she needs to speak over me. If it wasn't for her saying to me, because after the divorce, I kept saying, I'm never getting married again. Bump that. I'm done. Me and Jesus, I'm good with it. That's, mm, I'm good. And, 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 and she said to me one day, why do you keep saying that? Did the Lord tell you that? She said, you have an anointing to be a wife. Mm. And I was like, huh? And she was like, there's some man right now praying for the things that you bring to the table. But when you say, I'm never going to do that, you tie God's hands and you don't release his perfect will for your life. Now, this is not about how to get a husband and all that. We we can talk about that. But the word of God says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing, not he who finds a woman. You've got to be a wife 
before your husband finds you. And so I had to start saying, okay, God, I want what you want for me. And, and that allowed him to course correct me and say, you will be married again. And when it happened, it happened so fast. It was like, oh my God, is <laughs> we doing this? And so I'm saying all of this to say, whatever is in you that is not like him, that may be hindering you, give God permission. Just say, change me, oh God. Make me more like you. The word of God says, Hebrews 12 and 6 declares that God chastens. He corrects those that he loves. God loves you. Give him permission to change you, to make you better, to increase you, to enlarge your territory. Listen, uh, when we're driving in our car and we got our GPS on and we, trust me, we're in San Diego. And we The streets here, uh, Hubby was saying yesterday, he, he drives for a living, but he was saying yesterday, like the streets are crazy. And so we're following the GPS, but sometimes we got off course. Did, did we pull over to the side of the road and have a meltdown and just leave the car where it was? No. We, we stayed in that thing. Yeah, did it. We stayed in it and, and course corrected and got eventually to where we were going. It's fine. We had gas. We had fuel. Uh, we didn't fall out. I might have said, is this the way we turn it or is this the way that we need to turn? And so that is, is the essential thing. Don't get caught up in the correction and think, Oh, I'm going to roll around on the floor and wallow and be like, I'm such a terrible person. I didn't get it the first time. No. Take the correction, course correct, and then go in the direction that the Lord is leading you. Um, some of you, the Lord, it's like the Lord is showing me right now. The thing that you're asking for, God is saying that you can have it. He is saying at this moment that you can have it, but he's got to correct some things in you. If he had not corrected my thinking, this marriage would be doomed. We would have never even made it a year. A year to some people is not a big deal. But for us, it is major because we know that we had to... Um, keep God in it every day and that we had to be corrected constantly by the Lord. Shonda, the way you're thinking, the way you're looking at him is, is, is not right. You can't come to me and tell me what he did. You can. The Lord would say, you can tell me anything, but you've got to allow me to tell you what I see. And what I see is you handling it wrong. You, you're not honoring, you're not, you're not staying on your love walk. You're being easily offended. You're being touchy. Does that have anything to do with him? Or is that from the previous relationship? Or is that from something else somebody said to you as a little kid? What is that? Give that to me so that you can love without all of the garbage. So that you can be the wife that he needs. No matter what he does. So that you can be the wife that he needs. I... I I have always heard of submission as an ugly thing, as a, I'm a smart, intelligent woman. Why do I need to submit? And I'm submitting to God. Are you really? Because if the husband is the head, then who are you submitting to? We go to work and we do what the supervisor says. We don't even know them. They don't even, <laughs> might not even care nothing about you. But when they say, I need you to do the X, Y, and Z today, you're like, okay. You can submit to that authority. Why? Because there's a check associated with it, and that's how you're taking care of your family. But the Word of God says that Jehovah Jireh, that provision isn't, that promotion didn't come from, the, from man. That promotion comes from God. So in order to be promoted, in order to go to the next level, we've got to sit under some correction. I promise you, I'm not telling you anything that I don't have to do every day. I have to be corrected daily, but I don't take it anymore as something that offends me. I take it as a GPS correction. I'm trying to get somewhere. And if I'm going the wrong way, yes, GPS, talk to me and and I call it my God positioning system if my heart is not right if I'm not thinking about that thing right if I'm not looking at it right that I can get correction from a child I can get correction from watching a TV show and, and the Lord just speak to me and say you know you do that sometimes you act like that you know you're looking at something funny with someone showing out and you think oh my God what is wrong with them and the Lord's like that's how you look when you're being disobedient when you're not honoring what I told you to do 
So whatever it is, I promise you, the reason why you're watching this today is because God wants you better. He wants you to be able to handle the thing that he's given you and the blessing that he has for you. If you go into a new situation with the old mindset, you are going to ruin it. So take the correction and be ready for the thing that God has for you. If I had not asked the Lord to change me, I would not have the blessing of love the way that I have it. I would not be able to handle it because my mind would always be thinking, why is he being so nice? Why is he acting like this? Why, why are you bringing me breakfast? What are you doing? Why are you, why are you just showing up on my job? Were you trying to follow me? With <laughs> just, he's like, I was in the area and I thought about you and I just wanted to come see you. I just, I, I don't have long, just wanted to come give you a hug and a kiss. That was new to me. That was foreign to me. I, I think I get flowers every week um, just because he he promised God had nothing to do with me. He promised God that he would honor the gift of me being his wife, and he's doing that. So, again, this is not necessarily about a marriage relationship, uh, um, but it, it's. I'm just telling you, I had been married before. From the world standards, I should know how to be married again. But I didn't. I had to invite the Lord into the situation. So whatever it is that you're believing God for, the house, the car, the relationship, the career, ask God to change you and to, to turn your heart in the direction to just be a GPS. Don't leave the car on the side of the road. Don't walk off and, and, not, and forego the whole trip. Just let God reposition you and correct you so that you can get on the right path to get to where you're going, okay? Listen. I am going to pray really, really quickly, but if there's something specific that you need me to um, pray about or to be ministering about, just, just put that in the comments and I'm going to try to go back and address it. Um, but, but I just hear the Lord saying that this was for you, that, that this was the, was the last little piece that you needed before your breakthrough, that if you get the gift without the giver, the gift will mean nothing to you because you won't be able to handle it. Uh, sometimes when we're like, oh, I could be really good at that job. And then you go into that new job with your old mindset and they're like, is this person crazy? What is happening? But if you uh, invite God into it and let him just course correct, let him keep you on the right track, then you will get to where you need to be. Okay? All right. Let's pray. So, Father, we honor you and we bless your name. We thank you for being a God who loves us enough to correct us. God, at this moment, we're going to be brutally honest with you and say that we're sometimes easily offended, that we're sometimes touchy, that we don't like correction because it does not always feel good. God, we want to get it right the first time. God, we love praise sometimes more than we love correction, all the time, actually. But, God, at this moment, we are open and we are are available to you. God, we say forgive us. Forgive us for all those times where you tried to course correct us, but we still were determined on having our way and ended up outside of your will. But God, because you love us, you chase after us. Your love leaps over walls, tears down bridges, comes pursuing us in heart pursuit with your constant, unfailing love to us. God, the word of God declares that great is your faithfulness. God, thank you for being faithful to us when we haven't been faithful to you. So at this moment, God, we make a conscious decision to serve you, oh God, to follow after your correcting. Father God, the word says that you're a good shepherd. So thank you for leading us and directing us and course correcting us, God. We are open to you. We're available to you, God. We want the giver more than we want the gift. God, at this moment, reveal to us those things that we need to put on the altar. Reveal to us those 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 traumas and those past mistakes, God, that haunt us, that the enemy is using to remind us of our past. But God, you say that for your own sake, you will remember our sins no more, that you are not reminding us of our past mistakes, God, that you've moved forward 
So God, allow us to move forward, to loose the shackles of the past from our mind and from our heart. God, we forgive everyone of everything. We loose offense from our soul because where you're taking us, we can't carry that. God, we ask that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Help us to be more like you. God, our prayer today is change me, oh God, make me more like you. God, the word even declares that we must decrease so that you can increase. So, Father, let someone see you in us. Let them see you in the way that we walk, in the way that we talk, in the way that we live, in the way that we give, God, and especially in the way that we love. We thank you, Father God, that grace and mercy are new every morning because we used up yesterday's supply. Father God, I thank you that there is now for no guilt yet no guilt, no shame, no condemnation, that we are still your children. The word of God says that you found us wallowing in our blood and you said live. Thank you, Father God, that your praise report over us that we will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. I thank you, Father God, for every hindrance, every past mistake, every trauma, God, that as we cast it over onto you, God, that you are working all things together for our good so that our testimony will be that it was good, that I was afflicted. God, because you will get the glory out of our lives. God, we're open to you. We're available to what you want to do in us, for us, and through us. God, we hold our lives up before you, God, and we just say, change us. Help us to be better parents. Help us to be better sisters and brothers. Help us to be better men and women of God. Help us to honor you, God, in how we live our lives, God, so that someone will see what you're doing in us and come running saying, what must I do to be saved? God, I ask that you would heal us, not just mentally, but physically, God, just in every way, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, God. We decree and declare that we are healthy, healed, and whole. As Jesus Christ is, so are we in this world. And God, we thank you that we will be better, that we will be stronger, and that we will be wiser. God, we pray that you would heal our land. We pray for everyone in authority over us, and we thank you, Father God, for just blessing us to be a blessing. Now, God, this prayer isn't perfect, but your love for us is. So whatever it is I should be mentioning, whatever it is, I hear you, God. I hear you. For the past relationships that you've been in, that, that, that I hear you saying, but you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how bad it was. You don't know how they hurt me. God knows. God God knows and the word of God says that there is a balm in Gilead. God is a healing salve for you. It has nothing to do with them. God wants you free from that. He was right there with you in it, and he wants you free from it. Uh, uh, and not just, not just um, relationships of someone that you were married with or someone that you were emotionally involved with, but church hurt. People, people who were leaders in your church, and for you pastors, people who, who were some of your most faithful um, um, worshipers who, who, who said and did things that, that hurt your heart. God says give it all to him. That he wants you to move forward free from the offense. That he's going to deal with the situation but you take your hands off of it so that you can move forward without the hindrance. So that you can move forward and not be suspicious. So you can move forward and not be guarded and be closed off from people. God wants you healed. The trauma from the womb, the trauma of your childhood, the trauma regarding Regarding uh, the workplace, all the, all the things that were done to you, that people mishandled you. God says, give it to him. Give it to him and allow him to heal it so that he can make the rest of your life the best of your life. We're, we're serving notice on the devil. No longer will you remind us of past hurt and past trauma because God is always doing more for us than the enemy is trying to do 
to us. We decree and declare that we will live. That we will live. That we will live. Not just exist. But God says that Jesus came to give us life and to give it that, give it to us more abundantly. God wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you free from trauma. He wants you to move forward in holy boldness, ready for what he has for you. What's coming is so much better than what's been. Hey, God, what's coming is so much better than what's been. I am a living witness. What's coming is so much better than what's been. Believe it and receive it. God, at this moment, we thank you and we praise you that our best days are still in front of us. So God, whatever it is I should be mentioning, whatever it is I should be holding up on behalf of these, your people, we decree and declare that it is done and it is done well. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, God, I bless you. 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 God, I bless you. 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 I just I just need you to put in the chat what's coming is so much better than what's been. I I used to tell the Lord when I was younger, this is in my young days, when the Lord would would be a relationship would be over. And I and I would say that was great. But I know you have something better. Listen, God has better for you. He has better. He has better. He's 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 got better relationships. He he he's got better better leaders that he wants to place you in. He's got better finances that he wants to bless you with. But come on, come on. If I'm asking him for better finances, I've got to be a good steward over what I have now. Uh-huh. Um if I'm asking him for better um better ways of living and being. I've got to be a good steward over what I have now. And sometimes that requires me to have a teachable spirit, to be open to him course correcting. Listen, let me, let me just pray about the finances really, really quickly. The word of God says that he gives seed to the sower. It's in there. He gives seed to the sower. God does not need your money. He's not looking at money as he needs more currency in heaven to, to keep the sun on, to, to keep the rain coming, to keep the earth uh, rotating on its axis. He doesn't need our money. The word of God says that he gives seed to the sower. So you've got to sow where you want to grow. If if I put um, 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 watermelon seeds in the ground and I go back and look for oranges, that's not going to happen. Uh, uh, so so I've got to sow what I want to grow, right? So, so if I put watermelon seeds in, I want to see watermelon. In, in, in when the season of harvest comes do not hold your finances hold your money with a tight fist listen to god even now if he's telling you to sow it is i promise you it's not coming to me i promise you pursuit for his presence ministries we're going to be all right um but it is not that we're just like lord if they don't give their five dollars what is we gonna do no 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 no. we're faithful tithers and cheer forgivers but we desire that you might have fruit again i told you if i plant watermelon seeds i want to see some watermelon if you sow over here into pursuit for his presence ministries god will bless your finances wherever you're being fed you don't go eat at um pf changs and then go pay panda express no no it doesn't work like that you 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 should be paying or you should be giving the money to where you ate from right but when whenever we mention coins we, we, we'll say that we want to get our finances up, but as soon as someone starts talking about finances, then we start shutting down. They just want our money. And I get it. It is because of what I said before. People mishandle things, but I promise you, we're good stewards over here. So the Lord is leading you to sow. The information on sowing is, is there. So, and be bountifully blessed. I promise you, we go back and we read every comment. I also, if you're asking about a job, I hear you, God. If you're asking about um, promotion, 
you you you, you want to make more money you want to you, you they don't value you where you are let me tell you something do your work is unto the Lord. If your supervisor is throwed off, your management team is wiggity, whack, okay. The Lord, is that the job that the Lord put you on? Hmm. When, you, when you were asking him about where should you go and what should you do, mm -hmm. that, that's the job you're on, then do your work is unto him. Don't look for your promotion to come from man. You be a good steward. You get to work on time. Oh, God. You get to work on time. You, uh, you don't work to the clock. You, you do what it is that you've been required to do. And then God will honor that. But when you go in complaining, when you're in the parking lot like, oh, Jesus, help me. That, that, mm, yeah, yeah, okay. Again, a little bit, little bit of course correction so that we get you on the right path because God has more for you, but you can't take a negative stinking attitude into the level of promotion that he wants to give you. You've got to always see yourself as working unto the Lord. If you're, if you're just sweeping up every day and nothing wrong with that because we all like a well-swept place when we go in. If that is what you do, you do it unto the Lord, humming songs to Zion while you're doing it and thanking God for the activities of your limbs and the sound of your spirit. If you, if you, uh, I remember in nursing, sometimes you, you, you just cleaning backsides all day. If that's what you're doing, do it unto the Lord, because think about it. If it's my mom, if it's my grandma, I want to handle well. So I want to honor the people, the patients that I have. Um, yes, sometimes they're, they're not the nicest people who's nice when they don't feel well, keep that in mind as you're nursing, as you're caring for people. Whatever it is that you do, um, there's there's still racism, there's still sexism. I'm I'm at a workshop now about diversity, equity, and inclusion because people don't always do the right thing, but I still have to honor the God that's in me. I have to show up and act right even when they don't because I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for the king. So when you're asking the Lord about promotion, think about those things. Allow him to come in and show you in your family. Listen, family, how you feel about your family can be a complicated thing. You may be like, these ninjas are crazy. But if I said they were crazy, you'd be ready to fight me because those are the people that you love. That's, that's, that's your family. But ask the Lord to teach you how to show love to your family, even when you don't feel like it, even when, when they don't say they're sorry, even when they, 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 they act like they act. You still, because the one of the first things they're going to say is, I thought she was a Christian. Ain't she in church now? What? Is it, she, what what's happening? That they, they're not going to remember what they did. They're going to remember how you reacted. Ask the Lord to show you. There's a reason why you're in that family. Do you understand that you could be the one that breaks the generational curses? That you're seeing the foolishness because God wants you to pray about it. Because God wants you to be the change instrument that He uses. Listen in your relationships. Give them to God. Ask the Lord. Hubby and I, uh, this is running long, forgive me. Hubby and I used to say, uh, we still do it every now and then. God, is this relationship still your perfect will for our lives? It's so funny to me that before we even start asking the question, <laughs> he'll say, yes. Um, I asked the Lord is this still your perfect will for my life when I was in my wedding dress getting ready to go down the aisle? I said it to him, and I promise you if he had said no, we would have just had a big party because I wanted to be that sensitive to what he was saying. And, and even now, I don't want to say that this is my marriage. I want to say it's God's because we have to keep him in it. So ask the Lord, what is your perfect will for my life? There's some things you may want. Um, Pastor Kendra said yesterday, you may be asking the Lord for a Lamborghini. Is that his perfect will for your life? Because if you're asking for something and you get it out of season, it's it's not going to be wise. Um, it, you wouldn't give a, a, a Porsche to a 16-year-old. A I hope you wouldn't. They just got their got their learner's permit. That's that's a lot. That that's kind of out of order because it's not kind of. It is out of order because that's a lot of car for someone who's just learning how to use their turn signals. Right? There's some and, and teenagers have lead foots by nature. So the fact that you would put it's like you you're not thinking. Someone has to be the adult. So so okay, maybe you can get a Porsche when you in your thirties or or when when you show me a different level of maturity. But right now, let's get this A to B car and get where you're going. 
Let's do that. That 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 is Hebrews 12 and 6 in action, correcting in love. What you want is not always what you need because you may not be in the season to get it. So invite God into your situation um, and, and, um, and know that his desire is to bless you, but we've got to course correct, okay? All right, God, if I've done everything you wanted me to do, I promise you I'm going to go back through here and pray over each of you. If there's some specific prayer request that I need to be holding up, just put it in the chat, and we're going to lift it up before the Lord. But listen, share this with someone that you know needs the word. Share this with someone that you know is going through and needs to be reminded that that God chastens those that he loves, that, that correction from God is never a bad thing. It is because God's trying to get something to us, that he He's trying to bless us so that we prepare to receive everything that he has for us. Because I promise you, God sent me on assignment today to tell you what's coming is so much better than what's been. Amen. Listen, I give honor to my pastors again, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. I give honor to my church family, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries. I give honor to our overseer, Pastor Caesar Roland Richburg. I give honor to my handsome husband, Minister Al Lee Tucker. Happy anniversary, baby. I love you to life. And I give honor to each of you. Listen, don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in until you get everything that God has for you. Because why? What's coming is so much better than what's been. Valerie Bruce, I see you, my sister, and I. Your, your healing is now. It's not later. It is now. God says that you are healthy, healed, and whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Every person on here that's watching, just declare it out of your mouth right now. Valerie Bruce is the healed of the Lord, and we say so. Thank you, Father God, that healing is now. We pray for Annette. Um, Edwards uh, running for mayor, we decree and declare that Annette Edwards is the mayor in the name of Jesus. It's a finished work. It is done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for your blessings and for your favor. Each of you is blessed and highly favored. Go throughout this week expecting God to do something great in every area of your life. I love you. Be blessed. <laughs>